in Managua, Nicaragua. Uh, we're here uh, passing out food in orphanages and different places uh, around. Um, today we're going to do a Bible study in Matthew uh, chapter 8. Uh, we're going to talk about the cost of following Jesus. And the first question, Don, is uh, what excuses do people give for neglecting common responsibilities? Mm, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was busy. I was doing something else. Okay. Uh, what are the pros and cons of traveling all the time, always living out of a suitcase? The pros are you get to experience so many different things in life. I mean, it was just incredible being here. Right. The cons, I guess, you miss your family and exactly. your kids and all your friends and your church. And, and yeah. Okay. Um, why do only a few people follow Christ for a lifetime? Because it's their calling. And I think you know if it's your calling because you're not missing home as much as you think you would and you know it's just your time God lets you know it's your time okay okay let's read chapter 8 verse 18 now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him he gave the commandment to depart unto the other side okay what observation prompted Jesus to cross to the other side of the lake because he saw the great multitudes of people. Okay. And what orders uh, did Jesus give? He told them to go to the other side. Okay. Um, let's see, verse 19. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whither the, whithersoever thou goest. Okay. Um, what did the teacher of the law call Jesus? Master. And... Uh, what did the teacher of the law claim he would do? He would follow him wherever he went. Okay, uh, let's see. One more. Who approached Jesus? The scribe. Okay. All right. Verse 20. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Okay, what did Jesus tell the teacher of the law he would have to do without? Nowhere to lay his head. And um, verse, uh, what animals did Jesus say were more secure than he? Foxes and, and birds. Why? Because foxes have holes and birds have nests. Okay, uh, verse 21. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Right, and then we know the word suffer there means permit me to go first to bury right. my father. Okay, who offered uh, to follow Jesus? The disciples. Okay. Let him go first to bury my father. Right. Okay. He wanted, his father had died and he didn't want to go with Jesus until he had the opportunity to go first to bury his father. Then he wanted to follow him. So then Jesus said in verse 22, you want to read 22? But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Okay, what command did Jesus give to the disciple that ordered uh, or that offered to follow him under certain conditions? To let the dead bury their dead. Right, he said, come, come follow me. And then how he handled the disciples' request right was he said, Let the dead bury their dead. Right, okay, so now just a few simple questions. Why do we value popularity? Why do we value it? Because you feel like you fit in more. Okay. Um, what are some places you would not want to go under any condition? Into a war zone. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see what I wrote. <laughs> I wrote hell. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I did this in 2007, so it's just funny. This is 2013, so it's funny to read what you wrote. Why do we value home ownership? 
because then we have a place to lay our head. Exactly. Okay. Uh, what are pros and cons of putting down roots and getting settled into a community? Pros, you always have a place to go. You make friends and, you know, those friends become like family. Um, cons, you have to put up with the neighbors that you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have any of those. No. <laughs> In what ways can our love for Christ cost us? They can cost you some of the people that you think you want to hang out with. Uh, how can you model commitment to Christ for your children this week? Uh, you try and live as an example. You know, you want to pray with them, you want to read the Bible with them, you, you want to set the example that, you know, Jesus comes first in your life and hope that they take that with them everywhere they go. Okay. And then, um, what can you do this week to encourage a Christian who has made sacrifices to follow Christ? Hmm. Pray with them. Tell them what a wonderful work they're doing. I mean, tell them to look at their fruit. I mean, it's your fruit that is your reward. Okay. Uh, would you like to pray for your children today? Father, I just thank you right now that we can come before you, Lord, and that you have given us that power to have love, to the, have the power of love and a sound mind. And I just thank you, Lord, right now that while I'm here in Nicaragua, and while Sister Terry is here in Nicaragua, that you have our hands on our children, Lord. And I just thank you right now for that hedge of protection that you're putting all over them. And that they're going to have fun. And they're going to be safe. And then no, no weapon formed against them will prosper. And I just thank you, Lord, right now that all eight of the kids back at the house, they're just, they're all healed and whole. And I just thank you, Lord, right now that your hand is on Stephanie. And your hand is on Connor and Ashley, and the new baby, and Landon, and Lathan, and I just thank you, Lord, right now, you are so amazing, and that there is such a peace to be here, Lord, that they are in good hands, and that Christy Sue is taking such good care of them, and I just thank you, Lord, right now, for your provision, and for your love, and to be able to come here and minister the gospel, and I just pray that you touch each and every child while we're here, Lord, and that you just touch them, and you fulfill their lives, and you make their dreams become a reality. And I just thank you, Lord, right now for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you.